If you're not aware, Nebraska has the number one ranked transfer portal team in the Big Ten. So if there's not improvement there, then we're all wrong, I guess. We're talking Huskers as we do each and every Tuesday with all of you at 6 Central. So lock it in. Please gather in. Hit the like button before you get settled. Get settled. Bring your comments and questions as you do each and every week. And if you're here for a first time, welcome. And uh, bring some more folks with you to talk Nebraska football. Greg Peterson, Husker Online. This guy makes it happen for us now 68 consecutive times. Greg, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm all right. Hanging in there, Mark. Uh, how about you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, a few little things going on today, but n- nothing too uh, catastrophic. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, you know. it's been an eventful day between cameras and and cleaning my base or my garage yesterday, and something got in my eye, and I, my <laughs> eye, it's it's doing better right this second. But uh, wow, for yeah. about more than half a day, boy, it was puffed up and red and wouldn't stop oh. watering, and I didn't know it was in there and all scratchy, and it's still scratchy, but at least I can open it now. <laughs> so. well, the joys, of, the joys of growing older in life. Uh, I guess we all we all have that. Uh, it might be in one place or the other in the body, but it happens to us all somewhere. <laughs> all right, but uh, yeah, we're doing all right, and we're going to start a series. Everyone, we're starting this on all our shows, but uh, we're going to get to know our opponents. So for Nebraska, that's earlier than everybody else in college football, pretty much. Of course, <coughs> that August twenty seventh game against Northwestern over in Dublin. So we're going to have a Northwestern guest on this week. We're going to try to go through the entire schedule. It might be a little difficult to do them in order, but we will do our best. So we will get to that uh, breakdown here very soon. But uh, in the meantime, Scott Frost and company still looking ahead to 2023 and also looking ahead to who they can bring in in the transfer portal. Yeah, and this is a big weekend, actually, for Nebraska coming up here, uh, hosting two uh, Alabama transfer portal guys, uh, safety and defensive linemen. So uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy that we're talking about, like, adding recruits on that are immediately eligible to play in, in the upcoming season right now. So it's it, it's kind of cool to see this happening, um, and I think, like you said, Nebraska is already ranked number one there in, in transfer portal moves in the Big Ten, and um, you know what? You, you keep doing it until you can't, until you can stop, until you're told to stop. So you know what? Nebraska is adding every kind of position group they can right now. Um, it, every way they have. And uh, obviously I think that everybody can agree that they've actually they've added a lot to this, a lot of pieces to the puzzle here. And um, yeah, you, you just you know, keep on adding more on there while you can and, and uh, get as many bodies out there on the field. Um, you know, cause everybody knows now that <laughs> it's a free for all out there. And, and uh you know, you got you got to do what you can, and obviously Nebraska has been making a big move on that side of things right now. Been doing my best to try to track down these two transfer portal names for Bama. Anyway, I can't find them right now, but maybe somebody can help us. Uh, out let me pull them up. I'm not totally versed on their names. Let me see if I can find it for y'all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a big weekend for them right now. And, and let me just add on to that, that, uh, coming up the, the following weekend, uh, you know, they've got official visitors coming in, um, a couple of big names from the Kansas city area. And, uh, and then the following weekend after that, it, it, they're hosting Friday night lights, uh, number one camp. Um, so it's a huge recruiting week weekend then too. So uh, Nebraska bringing in tons and tons of guys, and uh, I mean, right now the headliners are all like guys out of the Kansas City area. There, you got a couple of four-star wide receivers, and and a and a, and a four-star, uh, probably the best uh, offensive tackle out there in the whole Midwest, uh, all out of the Kansas City area coming in here 
in the next two weeks to visit. So a lot, a lot of things going on. And, and these guys are all, I'm talking 20, 2023 kids. I mean, you know, we're, we're actually talking real recruiting instead of transfer poll rule or, you know, instead of a free agency like we've uh, been dominating with. So a lot going on right now uh, recruiting-wise with Nebraska. And, you know, they're, they're putting their, 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 their best foot forward. And obviously, you know, the biggest news that's rocked the whole college football scene today is, you know, Dylan Raiola you know, announcing his commitment to Ohio State. Um, you know, a, a guy that uh, Nebraska fans were drooling over that thought that, uh, you know, he, he, he might come here. But um, he, he made his choice today. Uh, he's going to be a Buckeye. And uh, there's a lot of time left until uh, it's time for him to sign on the dotted line. So um, if Husker fans are upset about that, uh, I wouldn't be too worried about it because you do still have a lot of uh, a lot of ties and, and a lot of time and, and, and things can change. If Nebraska can, you know, step forward on the field and, and start doing some things, uh, maybe his decision changes in a couple of years. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we are what a year and a half plus away from that. <laughs> yeah, he's just starting a sophomore season. So, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, yeah, um, especially those out of state uh, commits, I got to think, are less binding for the most part. All that does is, the media is that the news, the news was made me a little bit upset. Well, I wouldn't say upset, but just a little bit bummed out. But, uh, okay, I'm not going to go see him play this year. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been a scheduled trip for sure for me, uh, the first possible chance during the season coming up. But, uh, no, I, I, I'll uh, I'll have to wait another year at least to uh, go see him play in person. Mike Mike got us one of the Alabama names, which I should have been able to come up with because I shot a video when he entered the transfer portal from Alabama. But um, shoot, I'm going through those names every day. So I, I'm sorry, I, I stopped looking. I, uh, so Stefan Wynn yeah, is the defensive lineman. Um, didn't play too much at Bama. Played, no, he didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Twelve did. games, sixteen tackles over four years, but uh, he is coming into his senior season. At uh, Alabama, and yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, how many of those guys on that Alabama roster are guys that were highly coveted guys coming out of high school that uh, get kind of stuck there in the mix? And uh, you know, I mean, obviously they all want to compete uh, to get that starting job, but uh, when you're competing against a bunch of other four or five star guys too, um, and you've been there for a long time, maybe uh, you look where the pass is greener and where you can get on the field uh, a lot more. So, yeah, I like like I kind of mentioned, um, it, it's kind of a big weekend for Nebraska. If they can add a, a couple of uh, former Alabama guys coming in, it's huge. It really is. And like, like we, saw, we talked about earlier that, you know, Nebraska has been making a, a lot of moves here in the transfer portal, and it, it's reload, it, you know, that, that kind of term of reload instead of uh, having to do your traditional grind it out through the high school ranks. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It, it might be a nice combination here, but uh, time will tell. Well, like you say, when – he was a highly touted prospect coming out of high school. He was the third rated strong side defensive end in the composite and a top 75 player nationally, regardless of position. So he was, he was high up the ranks from IMG Academy and uh, South Carolina was his original um, spot. If people don't know about IMG Academy, I'll just give you a quick little rundown. I've been there. I've covered games there. And it's a football factory. It's a beautiful place. It's down in Bradenton, Florida, um, where Tommy Frazier is from. Um, and it's a boarding school, basically. It's, it's a prep school. And and they just bring in athletes from all over the place, all over the, the world, basically. And uh, they, they are like an independent – school that goes and plays all the other t top schools they can schedule on their schedule and 
Um, there's a who's who's names uh, of guys that play in the NFL that have been at IMG Academy, and it's a very special uh, experience to go witness a, a football game down there. And I, I don't care who they're playing. I mean, they could be playing like Miami Killian or or Miami Central or something, and it's just you are, you're guaranteed to have a great, great game with a ton of uh, five star prospects on the field gunning it or duking it out. So it, it's a pretty cool place. And if anybody's down there on vacation and there's games going on, if you're there in football season, I, I suggest you go there, go buy a ticket, and, and go watch a, a high school football game there. It's a pretty special environment. It looks like a pro, not quite like a pro stadium, but like a uh, like a real high end um, JUCO type stadium, or, or like a high end uh, any high school stadium in Texas. It, it's, it's a pretty special environment. Now Tyler Reed with the Dylan Rayola announcement, and again. Don't give up, Nebraska fans. No, we're, talking no. about, we're talking about we're sitting here in May of 23 or May of 22, and it's going to be December of 23 at the earliest that he's signing. So it's a long, long recruitment, and there's still going to be more conversations and more going on there. But uh, Tyler does ask if there's anybody that's a target past Dylan Rayola that you know of uh, at the quarterback position. You know, that's the question that went out today, basically, is that uh, where's your plan B at right now? And I, I think right now most of us are uh, a little bit in the dark about that. Um, you know, obviously they've already gotten their quarterback in the 2023 class, so uh, they're set there. Um, but uh, obviously they're going to go off for the top guys. And, and the biggest question is really is, you know, what's your pitch – right now to a five-star because I, I mean Dylan Ryle is a five-star he's the number one ranked prospect in that class and even with all the family ties that he has to Nebraska I kind of wonder what that pitch is like um, because you haven't proven anything on the field he commits to Ohio State and obviously you know you, you know you're committing to a pretty good program and I'll show everybody right now. I'm actually wearing my Justin Fields jersey T-shirt tonight because of Dylan Raiola. So, like I'm saying, there's two years left before he signs his name on the dotted line. And if Nebraska can turn things around on the field, who knows what's going to happen. Um, maybe like last week, if he asked me what the odds were for him uh, committing to Nebraska, I probably would have said it was under 25%, you know, about 20% or so. Um, he commits now, um, but I, I still leave those odds about the same place right now, and, and maybe they move up in the next couple of years if Nebraska can have success on the field, because that's the one thing that Nebraska lacks right now, to you know having all the credentials that uh, a lot of these other big boys have, but. It's been a downturn for Nebraska for a while, but if you show something on the field that, that things might be turned around and can be competitive again, then maybe your 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 pitch to those five star guys, especially guys that have family ties and legacies here, uh, might change a little bit. But until that happens, uh, yeah, I mean, when you're a coveted guy like Dylan Rayola. Heck, I mean, I was kind of surprised he actually chose Ohio State, to tell you the truth. I mean, I figured, well, maybe he's looking down the line. Maybe Nick Saban might retire in a couple of years. I don't I don't know his, his thought process there. But um, either way, he knows he's signing or, or committing to a, a program that uh, has a chance to win a national championship each and every year. So you can't fault him for that. So – no, Nebraska has a lot of guys targeted anyway. I mean, there's always a plan B in store. And uh, I'm sure we'll find out a little bit more about that in the next few days coming up uh, when you see offers going out to 2024 quarterbacks that have, haven't been offered already. Um, but they're, they've always got their eye on guys. And, um, you know, we're still new with, with Mark Whipple here. And, and we're not, you know, we're not used to the way he recruits and stuff like that. But he's also – 
he obviously has a lot of contacts all across the country. And uh, when he targets a guy he likes, I mean, it's pretty hard to say no. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how, you know, it, it comes out. And, and and like I said earlier, that there's a couple of here. Uh, well, not this weekend, not so much. But the following weekend when Friday Night Lights are going on and stuff like that, there's going to be all kinds of guys in here. Um, and, you know, we might see some more evaluations going on at that point so yeah we'll see i mean it's not it's not a devastating blow like it, it sounds like it is losing dylan rayola um especially when it's a kid that he's 2024 20, <laughs> graduate so <laughs> there's a lot of time here um for things to change so yeah don't 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 be discouraged is my is my message right now to husker fans <laughs> Keen Williams, Greg, is the safety you're talking about out of Alabama. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keen Williams, absolutely. Yep. Keen Williams, yep. uh, K-A-I-N-E. He's out of Marrero, Louisiana. So he was signed in the 21 class. Nothing wrong with his rankings. 11th rated safety, 7th rated in Alabama, according to the composite, number 176 nationally. Didn't uh, step onto the field. Had no stats, at least. That doesn't mean he didn't step on onto the field, but no stats for him in 21. So, uh, well, yeah. another, you know, another athlete, that um, uh, you know, is coming out of the state of Louisiana and we all know now pretty, pretty well that Mickey Joseph, uh, is the lead recruiter probably in the country for the state of Louisiana. And so obviously a guy that he's already been familiar with and, um, you know what? It, it, it's kind of a it, it's a thing that kind of happens too when when you have guys like a Mickey Joseph who grew up in in New Orleans, um, came to Nebraska to play his college football, coached at LSU. He knows that state inside now, and you know you, you point at other guys that he's brought in here. Well, obviously, Trey Palmer is the first guy that comes to your mind. Uh, Dakotas Crawford, other guys that are from his neck of the woods, and they know they know the ins and outs and, and how to make you feel at home, um, being so far away from home. If that makes sense to everybody out there, um, so a, a guy like that, obviously he's going to come here and he's already got allies, you know, friends, family type people that are from where he's from. And, uh, that makes things a heck of a lot easier. And, and I'll use it as an example of this that Mickey Joseph told us that, you know, when Trey Palmer moved over, moved here to Lincoln from, from, uh, Baton Rouge, you know, he's lived in, in Louisiana his whole life. And his biggest problem here when he got here is that the food's too bland for him. Um, so he, he, Mickey says here. Not Mickey, surprising. Yeah. Well, well we, here's what you do. You go to the grocery store and you go buy some Tony Sautry's, uh, you know, Cajun seasoning mix. And uh, that's going to fix everything for you, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, that helped. And then you, obviously, then you buy some, you know, Louisiana hot sauce as well and, um, yeah, you fix up your stuff here that they give you, that they serve you here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just to make it, you know, to taste to your liking. And I'm, hey, I'm, I, I'm a spicy food guy myself. I mean, if it's not spicy and it doesn't make me sweat, then it's not any good at all. Yeah, that's not me. That is <laughs> not me. No, 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 no. Huh. One I time note, everyone. I lived, under... I lived in Nashville for 10 years and uh, you eat the hot chicken there and I come out out of one of those places and I look like I just got out of the shower. Yeah. Not for me. Not for me. Always mild. Uh, everybody just uh, one final note on the two Alabama visits. Just, you know, keep in mind when you look at these transfer portal guys, how excited you would be if Nebraska was on the cusp of getting the 11th rated safety in the country, who was a top 175 player and the third rated strong side defensive end in the country. Uh, yeah. So, Big time talents there, possibly headed to Nebraska. I'm sure they've got all sorts of visits all over the place. Uh, we've been talking I, up. I wish there was like uh, a game 
function or practice function going on. That's the only problem with the, <laughs> you know, kind of the timing of the visit. But hey, it is what it is. Those guys put their names in the transfer portal when they did, and uh, they kind of got to, you know, see what it is, see where everything is out there, yep. the, you know, for their visits. So. All right, of course, uh, Nebraska-Northwestern will be the first Big Ten game, the first Power Five game of the nation uh, in 2022, August 27th, over in Dublin. And we are starting our series where we're looking at uh, the opponents for the Cornhuskers. And here we go with uh, opponent number one. And uh, we appreciate Michael Fitzpatrick joining us from Wildcat Report. Michael, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Oh. Thank you for joining us to give the Northwestern side of all of this. It's been a, a pretty good series. We'll we'll forget about it, at least from your side. We're the people in the chat are not forgetting fifty six to seven because man, <laughs> after three and nine, they they can't give up on the the best day of the year, and that's, that's what all, it was. That's all they had their hats to hang on. <laughs> last year anyway <laughs> but uh michael other than that it's been a heck of a series between uh northwestern and nebraska yeah i mean Northwest northwestern likes close games they've had a lot of a lot of good series with a lot of teams they like they like to keep everyone invested the whole 60 minutes hey michael when you look at this uh, northwestern program before we look at the specific team here in 22 uh we know what the challenges are with the academics, with the size of the school, with the recruiting footprint, all those things. But uh, Northwestern makes it work about as well as anybody across the country. Now, when they've cycled down, it's it's crashed, you know, two of these last four years at three and nine. But the two years it didn't crash, you know, they're on their way to Indianapolis in the Big Ten championship game. So it's it's an interesting program. Uh, you know, where, where do you think the program stands right now? Uh, I mean, I think it's kind of at a crossroads almost, if that makes sense. So, like two really good seasons last four years away to – and quarterback's been the big issue, obviously. Something, they, uh, something they're doing with developing quarterbacks, recruiting quarterbacks isn't working. So I think there's a lot of stuff they got to look inward, figure out how to avoid the – and the, you can – downswing, you don't have to go to the Big Ten Championship every year. No one expects that. But the downswings can't be – Three and nine and losing. Oh, yeah, nine, I, I, yeah, in Nebraska. I expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Move to Lincoln, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's been a roller coaster. Um, and what's strange is that the the peaks of yes now hit the Big Ten championship, but the the lows are lower. Where for a good <laughs> stretch of time, once Pat Fitzgerald had built this program, it was more. They're, they're going to win seven. They're going to win eight, not go to the Big Ten Championship, nor go three and nine. Um, they have built some nice facilities here recently, correct? Beautiful. Yeah, right on the lake, yeah. So uh, have, have, have recruits and uh, players that have signed, have they discussed and, and just talked about what, what that's brought to the program? Yeah, I think it's – it's definitely an advantage, and I think it's the biggest change with building the new facilities was it made facilities not a disadvantage for Northwestern. They used to have the crummiest facilities in the Big Ten by far, and the biggest change has been now Northwestern has stuff they can be proud of and show people and not – it's easier to compare to other schools. Michael, I just want to say I'm third-generation Chicago guy. There we go. My dad, my grandpa both grew up in Chicago. All right. So um, I, I'm very impressed with what Northwestern has been doing um, just to catch up with things. Um, being a guy, I mean, obviously I was born here in Nebraska, so I didn't have that opportunity to be a Chicago guy. But, um, you know, I think Northwestern's always been a, a program there that was kind of lacked. I mean, you know, it was always an academic school and kind of lacked on their on their – athletics but uh you know in, in the recent years they've really pumped a lot of resources into their athletic programs for sure i think that's been the the biggest change since they went to the rose bowl in 95 when fitzgerald was playing is they, they spend money on athletics now which has helped them maintain some level of competitiveness 
What is the distance between Chicago and Evanston? Uh, pretty, they're like right next to each other. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I was thinking Lincoln. I was like seven hours. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Wasn't listening to the question. <laughs> no, I, I got to think that, and you got to understand where this is coming from. You know, you look across college football on a Saturday afternoon and you see packed stadiums, depending on, you know, who you're watching. But if you're watching the big players in the Big Ten, the SEC, et cetera, you're seeing packed stadiums. Then we know what the situation is north at Northwestern in regards to the limitations we talked about with academics, with recruiting footprint. But obviously football is important or they wouldn't have retained Pat Fitzgerald all these times. They wouldn't make it to Indianapolis past programs like Wisconsin and Nebraska and Iowa and Minnesota. Um, but then you look at the stadium and what's the average attendance at a Northwestern game? Probably 35,000. If that, yeah, probably somewhere around that there. range and they're drawing from a large metropolitan area, but obviously they're hooked on the NFL. Um, you know, is, is that something that also reflects the roller coaster in terms of how many people show up at the games and the interest level? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when Northwestern's good, more people come. I think that goes for, Sure. And maybe not Nebraska, but I think for a lot of teams, whether they're good or bad, uh, the good teams get more people in the stands. But so I think uh, it's tough. Chicago is obviously a big pro sports town, and Northwestern is such a small school compared to everyone else in the Big Ten. So it's just they're definitely fighting an uphill battle with trying to fill a stadium, and it doesn't help when you go three and nine twice in three years. What what I, I want to know, Michael. Um... Kind of what's the sentiment around there when they host Nebraska and Nebraska is famous for traveling and obviously Chicago area is a very easy trip for Nebraska fans. And every time you see a game there, um, it's pretty much a, a red out. Um, so what, 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 what's that sentiment around there uh, when they, do they care? I, I'm not sure. I mean, the people who, the people who care care if that makes sense. Like if people go to every game, that stuff. They're like, it's terrible when Northwestern has to use a silent count at home because there's so many Nebraska fans. But I think in general, the same issue is like there's a lot of people like, oh, it doesn't really matter. And those are the people who don't go to a lot of games necessarily. And obviously, it's a place that there, there's plenty to do. <laughs> I mean, besides going to a college football game on a Saturday in that area. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, Lincoln's a little different than that. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what your day revolves around here. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's definitely a disadvantage for Northwestern, obviously. I think some people would uh, be a little surprised how many uh, NFL quarterbacks have been produced here in the last 10 to 15 years from Northwestern. Hey, Thorson's playing well right now in the USFL, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, so he's the last guy that you could count on being a you know an upper echelon Big Ten quarterback. And since then, you know, Hunter Johnson was a five star at Clemson, but certainly he, you know, not putting in everything on him. The offensive line, the playmakers weren't there. Uh, Ryan Halinski's now a guy uh, who played at South Carolina a little bit. Of course, yeah. he's now been at Northwestern playing is he most likely the guy or what's this quarterback battle look like for 22 yeah Dolinsky's in there and also a redshirt freshman who didn't play at all last year Brendan Sullivan those are the two guys they're still they're still battling it out they'll go into the fall sorting that out so hopefully one of for Northwestern's sake hopefully one of them can find a way to at least be an average Big Ten quarterback otherwise it's going to be long season again are they similar styles no, uh, Sullivan's Sullivan's smaller than Helinski. Not not as much. Not a big arm, really. More of a more of a runner than a thrower, I guess I'd say. But yeah, I mean, Northwestern's had success with guys who were runners before they were throwers in the past. So, hey, Michael, I got a question um, concerning the transfer portal. Um, how successful can Northwestern be there? And how much of a hamper is it on them for the academic, uh, you know, rules to get into Northwestern? 
Yeah, the uh, the academics make it tough because Northwestern, when someone tries to transfer as an undergraduate, they go back. Northwestern, like admissions, goes back and looks at their high school grades, high school transcripts. So if you couldn't get into Northwestern out of high school, they won't let you in as a transfer. Wow. wow. So, so Northwestern, I think all their transfers, I think all their transfers this year were graduate transfers because then they go and look at how you did in college academically. Right. So they really focus on grad transfers because that's what they can get into school more than anything else. Well, that that's, that's a perfect example for any of you high school football players out there watching this right now. You damn well better do good in school while you're in high school because it's only going to help you out that much more down the road. Sorry, that's the recruiting guy in me. Yeah. Uh, and I've been saying that for 20 years to kids. <laughs> What uh, what's being talked about in Northwestern circles concerning NIL and how that's going to affect Northwestern? Because of course, it's not the first program that's going to come to mind as benefiting from everything that's going on. That's a bit crazy at this point. Yeah, I mean, Pat Fitzgerald likes to play everything close to the vest, so there hasn't there hasn't been a lot coming out about what they're doing, who's gotten what deals, who's getting paid what, but. I mean, Northwestern's got some rich alums. I'm sure there's some collectives that could be set up, find a way to get players what they deserve, that kind of thing. But there really hasn't been much coming out. But that's just how Coach Fitz does things. Everything's quiet. So that doesn't mean they're not doing anything. It just means that Pat Fitzgerald's in charge of what gets out, which means nothing gets out. Exactly the way Scott Frost is. Absolutely. The, the most of those uh, top football coaches, they're paranoid. They don't want anybody seeing practice. They don't want anyone knowing anything. No yeah. reason to know outside of outside of the football uh, building, no and, doubt. And two or three lucky media members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Michael, are you one of those lucky media members? Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish I, I wish I knew what was going on inside the practice facility. <laughs> we'll remind everyone you can check out Don't Michael's work at uh, <laughs> Rivals on Wildcat uh, Report. You can check out uh, Michael's work right there. Uh, Northwestern, despite all the offensive struggles last year, did have a thousand yard back in Evan Hall. He caught 33 passes as well. Uh, kind of set us up on uh, who Husker fans will see from the Northwestern, uh, both the offense and the defense, you know, who's going to stand out? Who are the playmakers? Yeah, uh, definitely Evan Hall. He was he was the only guy on offense most of the season last year. So he'll be, he'll be back. And they also add uh, Cam Porter back at running back. He, uh, over the final three games of 2020, he ran for 300 yards over those final three games, four touchdowns. So he's back. He tore his ACL and didn't play last year, but – him and Hall will be a nice one-two punch. And receiver, they got Malik Washington. He really came on strong the last seven games of last year. So he'll probably be their top top pass catcher. Defense, uh, Tommy Adebaware led the team in sacks last year. He'll probably be like all Big Ten level defensive end this year. And then Bryce Gallagher, he'll, he'll probably be their uh, – he was their leading tackler last year, Mike Linebacker. I'm sure people remember uh, Blake Gallagher from Northwestern. That's his little brother. So he's uh, in his second year as a starter now. Hopefully he can take the uh, the next step and kind of play at the level his brother, Patty Fisher, those guys did. Well, unless Greg's got anything else for you, Michael, we appreciate you stopping by. Of course. Thanks for having me. So with, uh, yeah. Michael Fitzpatrick, they're on uh, Rivals Wildcat Report. Am I gonna yeah, see right. you? Am I gonna see you over in Dublin, Michael? Maybe. I, I. That's a lot of money I don't have. We'll see. Okay. Well, we're booked. So just uh, so you know, if uh, you do make it, uh, we'll uh, buy you a couple of Irish whiskeys while you're there. All right. All right. I'll let you know, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> enjoy the ball game, whether you're here or there. Probably enjoy it a little more if you're you're there. But uh, regardless. Um, thanks for stopping by and, and dropping down some knowledge on us. All right. Thank you very much. Great to see you, man. All right. That's Michael Fitzpatrick on Rivals.
give us a little uh, heads up on what Northwestern is going to look like this year. It doesn't sound too optimistic. It doesn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> At least, hey, Husker fans, you have something to look forward to, right? Game one. It, it really, I hate to say this about a team that, uh, you know, considering where Northwestern's been for the last few years, I know that they've had their two down years, but, um, you know, going to two Big Ten championship games and for as good as they've been for the better part of about 15 years now, and that Nebraska is coming off three and nine, put all that aside. Nebraska should, they should win big. I, I, I they ever, should. I don't ever want to say they should win big. <laughs> give me, give me a few games first before I can say that. If you just look at the talent on these two teams, yeah, oh no, I, I agree a hundred percent, and I'm sure that Vegas is going to agree a hundred percent as well. Um, but hey, we don't know. I mean, so, summer conditioning starts here uh, next week. So we don't even know right now what we have. To no, do. We, we don't. And and we, we've we seen way too much college football in our day to write off anybody. But, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a Vegas line out already on this game. Oh, I'm sure there is. Probably been and out for a year. I believe. <laughs> I don't want to say it for sure because I can't find it, but I believe it's 10 and a half. Okay. Well, I, you know what? I, I think that sounds reasonable just off of the top of my head after listening to what yeah. just heard. <laughs> I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> but I don't know that Nebraska wasn't a. Maybe bet the over now after hearing that. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know that Nebraska wasn't a off the top of my head, an eight or nine point favorite against Illinois last year. I, I think it was, you're right about, uh, you're pretty close to what it was. Yeah, obviously. And we see how that happened. <laughs> and certainly I trust Pat Fitzgerald as much as anybody. In but front uh, yeah. of his first game also yeah. as Illinois yeah. head coach. I mean, how many, how, yeah, how, how are the odds stacked against you to come out and win that game? I, I don't know. So, but that that set the tone for the season for Nebraska. I don't think it did much for Illinois, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, you know what? They jumped up on occasion. You know, they, they, did. Beat, they beat Minnesota. Yeah. They beat Penn State. Yeah. I'm not trying. It, it I, I, yeah, I'm not trying to diss. I, they they actually played very well last year, uh, and they did. They came up and rise to the occasion in several games. So I yeah, I, I'm not trying to make fun of Illinois at all. Please don't. Uh, Oh, don't, I'm right there don't, with you. They weren't a good Don't send team. me your tweets, Illinois fans. Don't send me your tweets uh, <laughs> and attacking me over that because I respect you. Obviously, I, look, I am a Chicago guy, okay? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Appreciate everybody being here. So what we're going to attempt to do is go through the entire schedule, bring on a media member, and uh, do a quick hit with them on on that particular team. And shoot, we'll be very honest that uh, hey, when when the opponent's a big opponent, we're gonna have more to talk about. When it's a Wisconsin guy, when it's uh, I forget their non conference game right after Northwestern going into Oklahoma, you know whoever that is, it's, yeah, you know, obviously not as many people are gonna be interested to hear. So we'll do a quick hit, just get a quick take on. If they uh, have what media, that team looks like. If they actually have media members. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Well, <laughs> that's yeah. not very nice. Well, I will say that before this show, we do our Iowa show, and we had on the play-by-play -play voice for huh. South Dakota State. Oh, yeah. Well, if we can get the play-by-play. -play well, hey, hey, yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, I respect South Dakota State program as much as anybody. I know you do. Um, I've been there. Um, I, I, I have friends that are coaches there. So, uh, no, that's a great – I mean, South Dakota State, North Dakota State, two excellent, excellent yeah. programs that, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of guys that play on those teams, and, and I know coaches. So, yeah, I would never diss those two schools ever. And, and you can imagine he was a uh, a great interview. Oh, yeah obviously has the pipes and also the knowledge. So yeah, he was a great interview. Anybody that's a play by play voice has pipes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
and uh, certainly knew that program and that roster inside and out. So it was a great conversation. Yeah. And, uh, like you say, they have a history along with North Dakota State and a couple others of uh, surprising some Big Ten teams. They play, they play some really good football at that level. Um, if, if people haven't watched, seriously, next year watch the playoffs in that, in that league. Um, it is some really, really good football, and you won't be disappointed. Well, Greg, he mentioned, uh, talking about the um, – his name was Tyler, the South Dakota State um, play-by-play guy, mm -hmm. that there was a three-game series set between – SDSU and Nebraska that was supposed to start with the COVID season. Yeah. And, and that all got, you know, obviously that screwed up everybody's chance of traveling and everything. Um, but it's been in the works to, to fix all of that. And, and obviously it's, a, it's a natural game to have um, either SDSU or, or North Dakota state is a no brainer to have every year because you have so many Nebraska kids on the rosters on, on both of those schools that they can come here and play against the uh, guys that they played against in high school and stuff. And like I mentioned, I mean, they played a very, very high level and, and could easily uh, be in, in division one, you know, and, and be in, in a league like, I don't know any of your divisional leagues. You know they could easily uh, compete there year in and year out for championships. So they play great high level of football in the Dakotas, and I think a lot of the country does not understand that unless they actually tune in. To I mean, look at how many the Bison. How many years do they win? They they win the national title almost every year. I sure. mean, it's they crazy. Do. It is absolutely crazy. And, you know, they send coaches to the next level and they still keep winning. So, yeah, it, it's amazing. And I have one of my best friends actually used to live in Fargo. And, and you know, he was a sportscaster in, in Fargo and uh, said, I mean, besides the weather, he loved it. It, it was just so football crazy. It, I mean, it might even be more football crazy than Lincoln, Nebraska. Seriously. Wow. wow. <laughs> Yeah, that actually doesn't surprise me, considering there's more to do in Lincoln just to, you know, pull people away to do a few other things. But uh, speak of the devil, when we say, you know, North Dakota State plays great football, so does South Dakota State, and, and they play Iowa is the reason why we had the uh, SDSU guy on, and we couldn't come up with the second game for Nebraska. It's North Dakota there you is go. game two for, for the Huskers. So maybe I'll try to get their play-by-play -play guy. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know who that would be. It might be somebody that, that I know. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, we're also we're talking about probably a, another program that kind of gets some feeders yeah. from the state of Nebraska, obviously. And, um, you know, obviously we just talked about Fargo and and, and then you got uh, Brookings in, in South Dakota, which I, I'll tell you, I mean, I've been there um, and they're building some phenomenal facilities there too so these are not little schools we're talking about anymore i mean it, even though you're, you're you're taking a step you know between fbs and fcs it's not that big of a difference anymore it, it, it's kind of cool to see good stuff so yeah and then it's georgia southern would be the uh, third game there and then there's got to yeah. be another non-conference game later Right. That's just Oklahoma after that, and then that's it. Yeah, Oklahoma, of course. Yeah. No. Yep. There you go. And obviously, you're getting Oklahoma at a pretty good time. If you're Nebraska, you probably you probably couldn't ask for a better time to get Oklahoma coming to Lincoln. <laughs> if you pay any attention to the trends of college football and stuff, and and what's happened with that program in the last uh, few months. Um, yeah, Nebraska's chomping at the bit to get OU here, <laughs> and, and especially after how the way they played against them last year down in Norman. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a really, really fun game. And if that's not the primetime game on Saturday night, 
I, I don't on, on ABC. I don't know what is going to be. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I was looking at um, people care about where college game day goes. I, I don't know why. And I, I'm think not come, I, I think that isn't that right now. If you're thinking, I mean, because well, they hang on. They that's, planned that's, this out. That, I went that, through that, this. That's got to be one of their top three destinations for that weekend. Got to be. Got to be. Okay. okay, I went through this. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, but again, I'm going to make the point that I don't know why anyone cares where college game day goes unless you're actually on campus and can go. But besides that, and this comes from a guy that worked at the place for 19 sure. years and the, yeah. the guy that uh, the guy that runs the audio for uh, uh, college game day. Um, I certainly take no credit in, in that being as good a show as it is by any stretch. I, I didn't work on it or do anything, but the guy that uh, runs the audio reported me for a few years. And uh, so it's a tremendous show. I'm not putting the show down. It just amazes me why people care where they're going. So anyway, the week right. of the Oklahoma do. Nebraska game. <laughs> What's that? I said, but they do. They do. That's People do. Big, oh, I understand. It's That's a why I'm... big deal when they show up on your campus. Well, but... it's a big deal for those people. I get that. I get why the people on campus care. Right. I don't right. get why people don't, watch. Yeah. I, I don't get that. But anyway. They're like trying fine. to figure out, oh, hell, I got to go to Lincoln, Nebraska. Jeez. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's, yeah. So, uh, so that week. You know, there's one other game I'm going to take a stab at possibly being the selection. So I'm going to read off the, the candidates would be, I'm guessing, BYU and Oregon, Penn State, Auburn, Georgia, South Carolina. Okay. No, not, I don't think really. they're going to get selected, but here's, here's no. the one. Miami and Texas A&M. That's pretty good match. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Right. Um, I don't think. I don't think does it match Nebraska Oklahoma. What else you got? Oh, that's the list I made. That's the it? only candidate. Yeah, it's a that's thin it. week. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to see Oklahoma Nebraska on prime time. <laughs> it's a thin week because <laughs> if, if they're both three and zero, that's going to be the game. They're going to be that's going to be game day. Seriously. Because Herbie will be here, and he'll be having to call it on ABC, and won't be able to make his picks. Well, we know that's we know that's going to be an ABC game. Uh, we don't, but why wouldn't it be? <laughs> I mean, just if well, you're well, if, I'm, if you're well, it executives, on, uh, it was on Fox last year. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, know who's I'm, got just, the... I'm assuming that's that's just me assuming. Yeah, I'm almost positive that was a Fox game last year. Yeah, it, it's hard to say with the deal they have now. It's one of those big I noon. Think you're games. Right. I think it was a Fox game, but that was yeah. an, it was a Fox noon. It was the big noon game. Yeah, right. So, wouldn't you think that ESPN has the money to say this is one we want? Um, well, yeah, they've got a selection order, right? You so, know, obviously, looking at that slate of games, I would think that ESPN is definitely targeting that game to to be their headliner of that day. If they're through, I mean, you know, we'll see. But, I mean, obviously they have to make that decision a little sooner. But, um, yeah. Maybe after the Northwestern Nebraska game, they'd say, hey, uh, yeah, this Nebraska Oklahoma game might be the thing that we need to show. Yeah. You know? And I don't know. If people haven't seen what game day does, the production, that they, I mean, the amount of people that they bring. Uh, the manpower and the, the just all the the gear and all the setups and the, the for the stage and, and the whole set and I mean it is it's incredible uh, what ESPN does uh, bringing that whole setup in um, that's why you see every 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 morning when you tune in there uh, wherever they're at whatever campus and you got people that are up at the at the ass crack at dawn. Um, stand in line to get in there and uh, you see them all there in, in the crowd and it really is that that really awesome of an atmosphere to be around and and to see just the wow factor that ESPN brings in to do that 
so uh, Roger Dodger here brings up a great point, and this was brought up a couple weeks ago on one of our shows, is that uh, we would love, you know what I think of now when I think of College Game Day is all the people in the background. So we, we need some folks to show up with Voice of College football signs. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I was I thought you were going to go somewhere with some other team besides Washington State flag going. Um, but no, I love that. Hey, we got to start this right now. Start a campaign. We're starting the campaign tonight. Um, and one of you out there, I don't care what team you're you follow and, and whatever show you follow here on Mark Rogers Voice of College Football, but. Let's get signs going each and every week on game day. And uh, that would be amazing. Uh, that sure would be that, funny. It would definitely help out our viewership. Oh, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> that would be That's free advertising. <laughs> and you're, 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 anybody out there is welcome to use my floating head on your sign if you want. Yes. To. <laughs> oh, if we could get the floating heads. Oh, that would be phenomenal. That would be fun. I know there's a lot of you out there that like to play around with gifts. <laughs> and you can do it. <laughs> the other thing that came to mind when somebody suggested that the other night was that um, uh, I got contacted by somebody. This was about three years ago. And they said, um, somebody called up Fine Bomb and they mentioned you. And I, and so I was, uh, I was like, working Ooh. with you. What's that? <laughs> Fine Bomb's like, who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, I, uh, I was working at ESPN at the time, so we have a database where we can look up any show, any time code, and find it. So I asked them, you know, about what di what day was it, about what time, and so I found it uh, nice. while I was at work. And it was you. funny. It was funny because the person calls in, and they said, "Hi, the Paul." First, the first thing out of their mouth when he goes, you know, Jim from. Tuscaloosa or whatever it was is How the first you goes, today, Paul. The, the first thing out of their mouth was they go, Mark Rogers said no. They go, they go, they go no, no. They actually said, actually before they said that they go, you probably know who Mark Rogers TV is, and he said, no. and they went off with no. what I said, and he just kind of like he didn't even address it, and he goes, and then he answered their their question. It was, it was great. It was oh great. Yeah. So we need well, more of those too. Any of you who want to call Fine Bump and just drop my name. I don't know what I, I can't remember. Probably what back in uh, Huskers Live in the I don't know forties or fifties of our shows that we talked about Fine Bomb and how little he actually knows. And, well, yeah, <laughs> and his, his show is only entertaining because of the callers that call into that show because <laughs> he actually knows nothing about college football. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to all of you Tennessee and Alabama fans. Because, yeah, obviously he's in Alabama, but he went to Tennessee. <laughs> Absolutely. But his show, I will say this, it is an entertaining show. It's worth oh, listening sure. to if you're driving around in the car and you want to hear a bunch of, <laughs> hey, Paul, how's your day going? Uh, I hate Auburn. <laughs> oh, it's, it's uh, something else, sure. Yeah, yeah. Roger Dodger says, let's start knitting those flags today. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, let's do that. Somebody's got to, somebody is going to have to bite the bullet and, and do the whole traveling uh, across <laughs> country <laughs> each and every week. Yes. Who wants day. to go to game day each and every week or, or if, uh, everybody. You know we could, how about we put together a GoFundMe account? to send a Mark Rogers voice of college football fan to game day each and every week. How's that sound? Huh? Can we get uh, people in on that? Well, and uh, we, we'd have to try to find the closest person to that location. So we're only buying them maybe a tank of gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about, I want to, I want the dedicated fan that wants to go each and every yeah. week. I mean, they, they might live in Seattle, Washington, but they're going to go to 
they're going to go down to Miami. They're going to go uh, to Rutgers. Oh they're gonna go to- <laughs> that might be tough to, to find that person. Yeah, so they're going to go down to Austin. You know, I mean, yeah, they go to Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, we got to pull this together in some way. I don't know if it's going to be that way, though. Yeah, you got to be dedicated to uh, – to, actually, you got to like travel, number one. Uh, well, maybe number one A, you probably have to have the time and, and maybe be retired or, or, or your boss is very generous and will give you time off. Um, but yeah, but it would be fun. I mean, the, the people that are there waving that wazoo flag every week seem to enjoy it. And they have an RV. I know that for sure because they drive <laughs> to every one of those destinations. <laughs> That is tremendous. Okay. Well, let's start planning. All right. If anybody out there has a good idea. Well, it's gotta be your it's gotta be your floating head on, on the thing. I mean, and then maybe you can have a little like a, a bunch of little floating heads underneath yours um, from various schools that represent your show. You and <laughs> how about that? Yeah. <laughs> so somebody get knit in that flag right now. I can need the time. <laughs> hey, if somebody just wants to pump up Nebraska and our channel here and our show, then they'll put two floating heads and get oh. both of us on there. I, However, you want to do it. I think you should just put a floating head of Scott Frost on there. How about that? With the voice of college football? Exactly. <laughs> How are people going to get that? I don't think that's going to help our it's cause. Gonna help, it's going to help a Husker site. Yeah. <laughs> Frost warning, voice college football. <laughs> How about that? Uh, all right. Well, okay. That's a, that's a project to work on. Yeah. Well, hey, we gotta we gotta fill time here when there's not much going on, right? Oh, we have filled it. We're we're giving a bonus time here. Huh, I was late, yeah. a little bit late getting in, so I had to go vote. Sorry, I had to go vote in the primary. My wife. Oh, it is Tuesday. Yeah. My wife actually texted me because my wife's a Democrat and I'm a Republican. And my wife actually texted me after she went to work to go make sure to go vote and told me who to vote on the Republicans ticket. <laughs> so I, I, I did that right before we went online here. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. I got to eat. Yeah. What's up? What are you having tonight? That's a good question. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Something yet. good. Uh, I am starved. Well, make some grub, watch some NBA playoffs, and enjoy the rest of your night. And to that, to everybody else out there. All okay. right, everyone. Head on back next Tuesday. We'll see you. Bring some folks with you. And we'll figure out the uh, college game day deal. And we'll uh, talk about another opponent next week. Hopefully. Actually, you know what? I actually could get a hold of Herb Street now um, since uh, <laughs> we're moving. So maybe I'll ask him what their uh, what their agenda is going into the season. So. Oh, he he doesn't know. I they don't, don't decide, they don't decide that until like uh, oh, they week. decided the week before or like yeah. Monday <laughs> yep. before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All I know from knowing the guys that travel. Yeah, they don't yeah. find out until those guys. Right and, and yeah, anybody ever wants to work in in media and production side of media, that kind of a job is a freaking grind. Those guys have to travel so much and are away from their families, and yep, just to produce something that uh, you know America yep. loves to watch. But uh, yeah, I, 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 hats off to any of those guys that do that and on a week to week basis. They, they love their jobs. I mean, obviously, I think we all love our jobs. That uh, <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't do them. But um, yeah, they, they they sacrifice a lot. Obviously, absolutely. All right, everyone. Appreciate you being here. See you back here next Tuesday. Thanks, Greg. Yep. See ya. <laughs>